Welcome to another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Bubba, you know you have to hip everything up now. Better known as RBU. RBU, I like that, Rick. It's got a ring to it. It does. Now, we do a lot of different things here at Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. We dive into you know very serious topics, uh, topics of the day. But one of our features that, that the audience seems to like, maybe even more than anything, and that's our profiles, where we go back into Rick and Bubba history or we talk to current uh, members of the Rick and Bubba team, maybe even their wives. Today we go way back, and uh, I, I've already got an email from uh, some of the listeners when we mentioned who our guest was going to be this week, saying that 45 minutes will not be enough, and they're probably right. Uh, but welcome to the Rick and Bubba show, Cassie O'Kid, a.k.a. Jesse Mitchell. How many other names have you had? Uh, that's enough. Is that uh, there, enough? There could be pending warrants out there. That's enough. You know, when name. I looked up and I saw your new look that you have <laughs> – I thought to myself, did I not see him storming the Capitol? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, guy, guy who tased himself in the groin is from this area. So, uh, <laughs> he is. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was a fun few days. <laughs> Wasn't that a dandy? Uh, so, uh, hey, uh, glad to have you here, man. And we, we to say that we go way back is the understatement of the day. Uh, try to help us on our calendar. So you started working with the show. It had to be in the first five years of the show. What, January of ninety eight. Oh my goodness! So it was year. It was we were two, year four. We were four years in. Mm-hmm. That's when I started my internship. Uh, I met. Um, I knew John Doe and I knew um, Angie Strong, your sales manager at the time, and they yeah. told me I should be a intern. And I'd already had the Casio name. Yep. Yeah. From, from calling from in pigskin pigskin roundup. roundup. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I was like, there's no way I could be, I could hang with, I mean, you guys radio legends. And uh, I thought there's no way I could hang with you guys, but I did. Um, uh, and so it, yeah. uh, that was 20, you know, 30 years ago now. So almost. Cassio, if you started in 98 as an yeah. intern, what, what year did you first call the show? What pigskin roundup? Yeah, and we'll have to, that? We need to tell some of the people in a minute yeah. exactly what pins, pigskin roundup is all about <laughs> some people think it's you know a, a meeting of gentiles but right. but let, let's let's talk for a minute so when when would that have been when you were like a i guess you were 90, in high school were you in high school 95 i was 15 14 15 yeah wow all right so pigs I'm, get, yeah. I'm 41 now so. all right then i want to ask you about that weird <laughs> phenomenon when you reach a certain age and now no one's age even matters anymore the way we look to you when you were 15 versus the way we look to you now even though the distance is still the same it doesn't matter. Forty-one and fifty-six. That's completely different yeah. than you being fifteen years old and and uh, and the way you see people. You know, isn't that weird? Yeah, I, I I wouldn't tell you my name at fifteen because I thought, wait, if they know my name, they'll know I'm the loser that's not at the football games with everybody and I'm listening to the radio. Uh, and y'all were like, just tell us the name. I was like, no way. And then y'all thought of the mysterious Casio kid. So so let's go back to Pigskin Roundup because. I have people <laughs> that, that I will run into, and some of you that are relatively new to, to the Rick and Bubba history, I, I think I can say this with zero reservation, you missed it. Because I've heard, I've heard people say that Pigskin Roundup, it, even though they enjoy the show and they like the show, that that, that was at two hours of, of a side of Rick and Bubba that, that the world may, will never see again. Uh, that Pigskin Roundup was its own, how do you even describe it? I mean, it was intended to be a high school scoreboard show, but it was not. Right. I, I, I don't know how y'all manage that, but uh, – and very highly successful non-scoreboard show. Uh, the scores were just, what, 30 seconds? You guys had the yeah. Golden Plunger. Uh, you guys had the Wild Game cooking. You had – who had the best uh, concession stand. Um, and then what really set me – you know, when you start getting into radio, it's the theater of the mind and what what's really going on in there. And – after I became the Casio kid, I, I started working at Little Caesars. And, you know, my claim to fame was y'all might have heard my name one time on the Pigskin Roundup. And uh, you guys <laughs> proclaimed to be broadcasting naked because it was hot in the studio. And uh, so me and a buddy loaded up breadsticks to bring you. And uh, Speedy let us in. And there you were in your underwear. And I thought, well, is this ain't theater of the mind. This is real. <laughs> guys are- Two busted can of biscuits doing a radio show. <laughs> well, if you go back to it, so Pigskin Roundup, 
It was on Friday night for high school football in the state of Alabama. And we made fun of high school scoreboard shows. Yeah, it was a high school scoreboard show that made fun of other high school scoreboard shows the way they've been done forever. That took themselves yeah. a little too serious. And as, and as Cassio just said, we, we didn't have team of the week. We had concession stand of the week, whoever yeah. had the best food at the ball game. The Golden Plunger was the best bathrooms, you know, the cleanest, uh, the most uh, ones you would actually go into. Uh, <laughs> and then we had mystery meat. And that's when two guys who love to hunt and they would kill anything. Uh, I mean, legally, they, legally. Yeah. I mean, they hunted. Sure. They, they hunted predators. They hunted crows. They hunted. You name it. They hunted yeah. it. Okay. And, and if we had a deal with them. If they would kill it and grill it, we would eat it. And they didn't waste any meat. And they would. But here's the catch: we had to eat it before we knew what animal it really was. Right. This and, is brilliant. And, yeah. We got to guess and try to figure out what it was. And they, so that's what Pigskin Roundup was like. But the other thing people don't understand is the Rick and Bubba show, which uh, I know a lot of you in different places hear it at different times, but it, it has always been live early in the morning. So on a Friday, we just did a live show that morning. They usually had us make, <laughs> making appearances and doing remotes the rest of the day, and we would come in, I mean, spent. <laughs> we got we, we got we got nothing left, and we said tonight anything goes. And we really, really, honestly, I don't think I'm exaggerating to say we went nuts. We went crazy. For for, for I mean, it, oh, it was super fun. Super I think fun. at one point subconsciously I was trying to be fired. Right, I you think know, because I just had to have a break. I just couldn't take it. Well, so <laughs> and, and so you called the show. I mean, the Pigskin Roundup, and yeah. you got your name because you you had a Casio keyboard, right? Yeah, I did. I pushed the one button right. to make it do all the the hard work, and then did your rock steady chant. The yeah, you guys used to do the rock steady, and so we did rock steady. And then the next week, it was the theme music, and I thought, well, that I didn't I didn't see that coming at all. So, did you have any interest in radio, in comedy, in anything at all as that fifteen year old teenager, or were you just a fifteen year old teenager that said, "There's this wild and crazy scoreboard show, and I just want to be on it." Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I was class clown, but um, you know, here in the scoreboard show, sitting with a couple of my buddies playing video games on a Friday night, um, we just thought it'd be hilarious. We that night we just happened to be playing with a keyboard, and I thought, why don't we do the rock steady with it? And of course, them they were like, we're not calling in, singing a song on the radio. I was like, well, they don't know us, so let's do it. So then, like I said, I thought it was cool until I realized, oh, we're the 15-year-olds playing with a keyboard on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Cassio basically, Rick, was looking for any job that would keep him from having to go to work at Goodyear. Yeah, yeah I'm not built for manual labor. I'm not. Oh, no. So, By far. No. So, right. so what we'll do, we'll come back and, and we'll talk about You heard him mention uh, kind of the journey that, that led to him becoming an intern on the program. And then the journey that we all went on. Uh, with one Jesse Mitchell, uh, a.k.a. Cassio Kid, <laughs> Or as he likes to call it, the funny years. Yeah, the funny years. If anybody, <laughs> had, told, if anybody had told me how, how this thing, I'll never will forget that moment. when I And just hang on to this moment because you'll hear it later in the podcast. When I looked at Bubba and I said, if you had it, I, what I just saw last night on television, if it, I had the same reaction the first time I saw the two-headed calf at the county fair. I mean, it, 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 that, I, mean it, it, I think our sales manager at the time gave some of the best descriptions I've ever heard. Steve yeah, Harrison. He did. So we'll come back. I think he called me the bearded lady and I ended up looking like I was about to say, you wrote that one down apparently. I'm growing into my skin. I'm, like, I'm really blossomed. We'll come back more with Cassio Kid on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, so we're visiting with, with Jesse Mitchell, uh, better known to Rick and Bubba fans as Cassio Kid. So you you had the opportunity uh, to intern somewhere. Now, this was this when you were going to the junior college? Is that is that what brought up the? Yeah, inter- Gadsden State, where the uh, where the communications. Uh, I took it as an elective because I thought, well, no no way I'm going. to – I was taking computer science, and I thought, no way I'm going to make it on the radio. Uh, so I'll just take it as an elective with ping pong. That was a hard course that year, but. <laughs> yeah. um, then I, I hung out with you guys, and I remember you had to get paperwork signed uh, by the, you know, Speedy had to sign it, and then my communications director, who had never met me before, but he decided to sign it, and he told me that I would not learn one thing about radio from you guys. Uh, he was not a fan. <laughs> he was not uh, a you fan. You know, meanwhile, they're playing, uh, you know, Steely Dan on the old reel-to-reel. Right. Um, and, you know, we have two reel-to-reels, and your whole job on that segment is to, 
start the other one seamlessly and that was it. And, but I wasn't going to learn anything from you guys. So do you think though, really looking back and even the way the show is now and, and the way you're approaching, you know, being in the business and, and, and all that you're doing, do, do you think though, really what he said was right? Because, <laughs> yeah, because 100% yeah, yeah, because right. what you, what, what you learned from us has nothing to do with radio, but it might've had something to do with entertainment. It's definitely, yes, you guys, you guys do a, it's a three ring circus, not a radio show. So yeah, he, he was correct. I didn't learn about, I'm not hitting post, uh, you know, after my show now. And right. so I'm, I'm just doing a four hours of less, less entertain you, make you laugh and move on. So let's talk about that. When you, when you decided to be the intern and you started, uh, you, you had dealt with pigskin roundup, but probably knowing you and, and when I was your age, the actual live morning show, you probably didn't have much. Did you have any, did you listen to it going to school or anything? Did you know much about the morning show? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, in high school, we listened to it going to okay. high school, right? Uh, college, uh, there was a little, la- I heard the tail end cause you know, you're getting your, your 10 o'clock college class, right? You're not scheduling the early morning anymore. So I would, I would listen on the way to the Gadsden state campus and then, uh, talked into an internship. I didn't know anybody, you know, I didn't know D or what was the other guy, Aaron boy, or any of the ones that were currently there. Um, and then, uh, got sucked in and it was it's been a crazy i can't get out now i so, can't get out i've so, tried so do you so that was that the was that the interns when you came was it don juan demarco and aaron boy who did you work with during your uh, internship uh, it was the end of uh cooner and swish okay okay yeah there might have been one i don't remember i think that was cooner and swish and then it was me i think you just mentioned a future podcast there you go uh, yeah that's sorry. true i forgot about that uh know, they, they got some stories uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, well, when you see somebody in the in speedy's office Throw a stapler at their fiance. You, you, things are popping on a Saturday night. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I've learned listening to all the behind the scenes stuff that you guys do, conversations we're having. I don't think Bubba and I, we realize it to some extent, but by the time y'all came along, we already had wives and children, you know, and, and we, we, we were, you know, we were respo- somewhat responsible adults. The interns, y'all lived, y'all had your own little intern island, didn't you? Yeah, we had, we had our own section of the office. And then, uh, you know, luckily my, my entire life has been right place, right time. You guys and the station we were at started getting bought out by bigger companies, which was a result of you guys being able to move and it was perfect timing. But when I, so when I jumped in corporate was in Birmingham, uh, you know, some of the higher ups, but we still had the local office. And at one, at one point I remember the GM, I, I believe John Jenkins. I don't know if you remember that name. I do. Um, but he, he called all of us quote unquote interns in and said, I've got your, your, uh, that was when you wrote down your time and they just had to pay you based on what you wrote down. Right. Literally all of us had 80 hours in one week, (laughs) um, one week, not two weeks, one week. Right. And he was like, I'm gonna let it go one more time, but just know this is, this is where we start checking time cards. Cause we would just go hang out. So if somebody was like, Hey, you forgot your beeper at the station. We would come in and charge them for an hour. You know what I mean? By the way, I forgot about beepers. Yeah. <laughs> Do y'all remember? Wait, they, that, y'all had really high tech. Do you remember the system? It was way before you could send an actual text message on your pager. Oh, yeah. Like from yeah. the home base. That was super high tech now that I think about it. So you, you we, s- were, we were trendsetters, Cassio, <laughs> in the tech department. Look, I remember when we got a fax machine, and I remember the first time someone had called us and told us about the internet and I went to check it out and I come back and tell Rick, I said, Rick, you ain't going to believe this, this thing called the internet. I, I, no, and I email. We used to get emails off bulletin boards, which you had to dial up to get into it had no graphics. And we used to read them on there. I would, I won't go TMI here, but, but you'll get the basic deal. You know, I remember Bubba would walk into my office and he would hand me my copy of the emails, every email. Okay. Every, every one day. of them. And it was a stack of papers. And I would go into the restroom to get ready for the day, have a seat, and I would be sitting there going through them. And I'm like, man, where do these letters come from? I mean, where, they, me trying to explain to Rick, email, Cassio. No, they, but where are they coming from? Where are they coming Where's from? Where's the stamp? Where's the stamp? <laughs> I don't get this. There's not an envelope in here. So, uh, but Cassio, you you were with us during a, a, a rapid growth time. Yeah. And, you know, we were. I was looking back on the list of stories that Speedy had pulled. And I know, and I remember all of them, but I just didn't remember there were so many of them. 
That was, well, when I joined, you got bought out, then got bought out again. Then that station moved to Birmingham. And this, within a few months, I will never forget Speedy coming into us and saying, by the end of the show, we will be doing the show because they're walking out of the studio, you guys. And I, because it was the end of the contract. Yeah, I remember that. And I was like, what? Yeah. What do you, I'm not, what? I can't, we can't do anything. I can't do anything like, so that, and then boom, you resign and then boom, resign again. And it was, so it was, it was a chaos of growth just in the time I, I was there from 98 to, I left in 03. So just in those five years was a, a lot I remember of change, 50 markets. I remember it was just chaos. Yeah. You probably, you're right, Bubba. I bet you and those that were with you, you guys experienced the most growth and change of any era. You know, we've been yeah. we've been at the same place pr- pretty stable for a number of years now, but yeah, and those- since I left, you've been in plateau, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the funny year. All right, we'll come back. We'll continue with Cassie O'Kid on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, so Bubba, uh, we've been talking about the Raycon earbuds, and you know the comfort of these. I know that what we're saying. I don't want to go and say well, they're more comfortable. Uh, they're more discreet. You don't have the white things hanging out of your ears. But I know what everybody's thinking. But are they as good? Do they sound good? Yes, they are. Yeah, I mean, the bass is fantastic. And also, they're about half the price of what the other earbud folks are wanting to charge you. Uh, we love our Raycons. And six hours uh, of playtime, uh, even I can get them to you know sync up with Bluetooth. I, I can do it. Folks, that's saying a lot. It is saying a lot. Uh, they are built to perform anywhere at any time. They are water and sweat resistant. Uh, and of course uh, they got enough battery life, as I said, for six hours, uh, they make great sound accessible to everyone. And uh, with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of the other premium audio brands without you sacrificing quality. Now here's what you need to do to get yours. Uh, they're offering 15% off. Uh, if you go to buyraycon.com and then put slash Rick and Bubba pod, so you want to put Rick and Bubba and then put pod at the end. That's it, 15% off, and they're already about half of the others. So feel free to grab a pair and a spare, 15% off, at buyraycon.com slash pod. buyraycon.com slash pod. All right, talking to Cassio Kidd on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, we just talked about that you were there during probably the, the most change and, and growth. I think that was those five years when we solidified ourselves as a, as a legitimate product, uh, but 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 a lot changed uh, during during those those years. Well, Rick, I, I've got to jump into one of the stories yeah, here because we're we're going to run out of time yeah. today on this. But Cassio, we we had a report of a monkey that oh, was gosh. terrorizing a golf course. Oh my goodness! It was getting in trees and throwing rocks at golfers, and of course, we, we sent you and Speedy out to investigate it. So it tell, was a hairy velociraptor, is what it was. Yeah. Is what it turned out to be. So this monkey report, and if I remember right, the monkey allegedly, because I want to be fair to the monkey, uh, Rick, don't worry about that now because he was tested for rabies. But anyway, and we call it a destructive <laughs> test, a very destructive test. But these people had a monkey that what we heard had a, had a, had a, had, a, had a diaper on, and it gathered a pile of rocks. And every time a golfer would come to the the particular hole on the golf course near the monkey's home. He would pelt them with rocks and steal yeah. golf balls, right? Yeah, and he even yeah. I think it really came to a head when he was sitting on the roof of the house and he hit his own owner in the back of the head when he went to get mail one day. Yeah, that's when the owner had yeah. had enough. So we send you and Speedy to investigate and tell tell everybody what happened. Yeah, so we get out to the uh, the golf course and there uh, before our eyes is a monkey in diapers and and look before this moment. I was fine with monkeys. I had no, well, you know, me and him, I, me and monkeys had an agreement. We had never done anything to each other. The most so dangerous we thing you'd done to that part was ride with Aaron boy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's a monkey and he is in a diaper and he was on top of the house. It was perfectly written. So whoever described it, had it nailed. And then the, the, you know, the, the owner got the monkey down, told him to come down. And, um, uh, so he's crawling on speedy. He crawls on the owner. Um, I'm not sure who, if anybody else was out there, but for sure us two. And, and it was all fun. And he crawled on me and he, he, he gave me a little love nibble on my ear, uh, you know, with the front teeth. And I, I was like, Hey, what was that? What was that? And he goes, yeah, he likes to do that. He like, he likes to bite on your ear. And I said, well, he's not, he's not going to bite on my ear. That's not right. That's not going to happen today. 
And so I then proceeded to cover my ears. So, because he was focused on my ears oh, yeah. and, um, you know, it probably, you know, smelled like marinate and smelled like fast food. So he was in and right. as he continued to, Mikey. then he tried to pry my hand with his little monkey hands off of my ear. He had a pinky and a thumb and was trying to pull my hands off. And then he was mad because it wouldn't happen. Speedy is, of course, is giggling, and you you guys are giggling. Sure. And I am screaming, make it stop. And <laughs> the monkey grabs my collar. He swings in front of me, and I close my eyes because he's, like, screaming in my face, and he he slaps me. He just straight up slaps me uh, for me to open my eyes, and then he would point at my ear. And so I tried to shove him out of my face, and when I did, he crawls up on my elbow. And so now he's like, he's perched um, on my on my forearm. And I start to shake because I can't get this monkey off. Uh, strangely, monkeys have good grip. I yes, don't know they if you do. Know They're yeah. incredible. Um, so now he drops down and he's hanging, uh, ironically, like monkey bars uh, from <laughs> my forearm. And he proceeds to rear back and take a chunk out of my elbow. Wait, you just a, showed us. Have you got a scar? Bubba. Yeah. 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 yeah this red, this, this right here, this red mark is from where he, he chomped on me. So he bit you good. And, and yeah, you know, we, skin. we didn't know really the protocol for well, a monkey had, biting your now. arm, but yeah. as we talked about it on the air, we quickly realized that, uh, you know, the CDC and people were not really big on that. Do you remember what it caused? Uh, what it, what cost? What, yeah. What it caused in Atlanta with the CDC. Oh, it was, uh, well, here's the deal. I had a voicemail at the radio station, but I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest, as popular as I thought I was, that voicemail box stayed a little empty. Not many people calling the kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> but when I got back, you know, we had to drive back from the golf course. And when we got back, uh, it said my voicemail box was full and numerous doctors uh who were not amused by the segment and told me to seek help immediately, uh, including uh, like you said, Bubba, the CDC. In Atlanta, had multiple officials in my voicemail inbox. And so I had to go get shots. I had to go get treated. Uh, and then, like you said, the goal was to find the monkey. Yeah. And ironically, for a little bit, remember, the, the owner said he got away. Yeah, uh, right. He didn't know where he went. Yeah. He wasn't big on the yeah. test. He knew yeah. he knew the test. <laughs> the test and animal for rabies, as Bubba said, is yeah. destructive. Yeah. And yeah, well, it's a pass-fail. Yeah, when they put their little head in the freezer, that'll do it. Yeah, that's it. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and always the awkward part is when they come out and say, got some good news and bad news. <laughs> And the good news is your monkey does not have rabies. Now, the bad news is it also has no head. Yeah. Right. You, don't, you don't have a monkey. You had the monkey. Right, right. Which the monkey is over. And if you remember, that, that turned uh, the people attached to the monkey against the show just a little bit. <laughs> you know, because, you know. There, you, there, was a few, there was a few hate calls. Yeah, we, we learned yeah. over the years if, if you end up getting people's animals killed, uh, yeah. they'll, they'll switch it over to John Boy and Billy. It yeah, was the yeah. one book yeah. that I can remember that we went slightly down and just, 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 just a little dip right. in that one area. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that county was not kind to us. <laughs> yeah, it was a fall. It was a good fall. It, overall, it was. But I'll tell you one thing. No. Let me, you know what, though? It was Radio Gold. It, it, I, and let it be clear that I, to this day, really hate monkeys. Yeah, yeah. And you have and a And it was not theater of the mind. It really happened. It that really was, I, that I was, can so remember. It really happened. I yeah. can remember and, you hollering, hollering that the yeah. monkey bit me. The monkey. Bit the only me. time I heard Cassio yell louder and and more distinct than that is when he was running from the woman in red. Yep, that's during right. the thirteen right. working days of horror, and he <laughs> thought that the girl <laughs> down at what school was that? Uh, what what uh, school it was, was the that? Girls' school. It was all female. Yeah, yeah it was close to Montgomery. And and uh, you saw a Jackson? red light coming out from under the door, and y'all took off running. Well, uh, and that's one of the best stampede sound effects I've ever heard. Yeah, I, I and you can hear Cassio. There's a hundred people. Yeah, sounds like yeah, screaming. Yeah. You hear Cassio's voice in that. And here's what I here's what I've noticed, Cassio. And I don't know if this still continues. I guess we we should ask uh, your friends and your and your and your wife. I notice when you get scared. You don't give full sentences. There's no subject yeah. verb relationship. You just scream you, you, you just grab a phrase, and that time with the with the ghost was red light, red light. That's <laughs> yeah. all you would say. And then with the monkey, it was like monkey bit me, monkey bit me. That's all you would say. And we're like, well, how you mean he get bit you? What happened? It's because it, y'all y'all can't understand that a monkey bit me. I feel like it was a self explanatory sentence. <laughs> Everybody kept saying what happened. <laughs> I keep the screaming. bottom line is a monkey bit me. <laughs>
<laughs> and, yeah, let's get down to, to the bottom it, of this. It, yeah, on the horror story, if you're looking for a lady in red and the light turns on red, that's all y'all need to know is there's a red light. <laughs> that is one of the funniest sounds God, when you are running that I've ever red heard. Light. <laughs> Casio 2, one of, one of my personal favorites was when you well, told, then, you told the ahead. story about Ben Purr, mm. uh, the cat that had the wheels in the back. It was a handicap. All right, yep. so let's go. To, I want to open that up for just a that, minute, too. Because I even referred to that this weekend, talking to somebody about a pet that was having some problems. I said, put wheels on him, call him Ben Purr, he'll be fine. And and what this is, <laughs> and, and I think this was a learning curve for you, you know, now being full-blown in the business and doing what you're doing. This was one of those things where you realize you get so excited that you've got a good story for the show because yeah. you start saying, you go out into your whole life, and people kind of get tired of it saying, oh, that'll work on the show, that'll work on the show. Was this kind of your introduction into a, Now, the show's laughing. People are rolling. We're, we're, you, you feel like a, the, the, a, like a champ. Like, like The show wanted to put you on our shoulders, right. you know, if that was physically possible. Well, when but, I got left out of the latest ca- contract at that moment in time, yeah. and you told, y'all told told me you need to bring something to the table. Yeah, boy. Um, I thought, well, I, well, it's time to bring stuff to the table. But did I didn't you re- know I was bringing a dish. Yeah, but <laughs> did you realize, though, that people that now become the bits on the show don't think it's as funny? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Um, you forget. You probably need to change some names and some locations. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And I went full blown outing. Um, you remember former intern Shaggy? It was his in laws and grandmother. Yeah. So tell everybody what we mean by Ben Perk. Um, so we took a trip uh, to uh, Mobile for Mardi Gras with Shaggy, the intern, who I went to high school with, and um, his in laws lived down there, and his grandmother. And so we went to his grandmother's house. And, um, we got to edit this a little bit, but just for time, but I heard a squeak, 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 <laughs> come th- roll through the hallway and, <laughs> and I, my, I perk up and I'm like, what are we not hearing the squeaking noise? Do we address the squeaking noise at Meemaw's house? Nobody told me <laughs> squeaky, squeak, squeak. <laughs> and, and, and Shaggy kept giving me the no, he just give me the slight waving you off. Yeah. Yeah, just because he could see the wheel. <laughs> no pun intended. The wheels turned into my head. <laughs> right. And um, it, it come to find out the squeaking noise um, was her cat who was in a wheelchair. Mm. Uh, the back legs were in a wheelchair. Oh, so the front God. legs would pull it around like a little rickshaw. You oh, know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. yes. those front legs, I mean, it looked like a bulldog. You know what I mean? It was so strong. <laughs> so strong up front. And the name was thomas i believe it was it was it, it was whatever it was some yeah. boring name yeah and she she said he's shy you know he, he he didn't like coming out to people and i said hey if this was my cat this would be the showcase of the party like y'all would come over to see the cat in the wheelchair and we're not going to name it thomas i said what i would do is i would get a little lego man and put some dental floss or a string in his hand and i'd Attach him like a chariot to the back of this cat, and we would call him Ben Perk. Oh gosh, that's good stuff. That it, is funny. And, and Meemaw did not. It didn't go. Think over. it was funny. Yeah, it I thought it was funny. I I, I made up catiator jokes. I thought gladiator. <laughs> I thought we could go that. <laughs> but it didn't go um, over. It was no. It didn't go over in the house. It went over great on the radio. Well, yeah. Um, How and that was ben? also when I learned that Judson was going. Hey, you. Shaggy was telling me you you. you you're talking about my Mima on right. here. And I yeah. was like, man, but it hit, but it hit, buddy. Right. Well, yeah. let's face it. Uh, she came out ahead on Mima's that you dealt with. <laughs> oh, buddy. And we that did- brings me to another favorite Casio moment when uh, you actually burned your grandmother's house down, but you didn't find out oh. about it till years later on our show. I thought you were going to go Granny's a Bleeder. I, I, I've had well a, that too. I, do you realize I'm not? I even, have I'm a not, bad run uh, with uh, me, Mom. Right, hold up. Let's, we'll come back because I was going to. I've noticed a, a trend here. You and our senior citizens and our seasoned citizens. You've had you've had run in after run in after run in, and we'll talk about that with Cassio Kid when we come back when Rick and Bubba University the podcast continues. All right, so Bubba, uh, I want the, the audience to write down B A M B E E, Bambi, but it's spelled with two E's at the end. Uh, so if you're running a business, what's one of the areas where you got problems? HR. Oh, yeah. HR issues can kill you. Wrongful termination suits, uh, minimum wage requirements. Keeps you from doing the thing you went into business to do. Absolutely. Now, when you start looking for HR folks, they do not come cheap. Uh, average salary for HR, $75,000 a year. 
Uh, so Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E, was created specifically for small business. You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft HR policy, and maintain your compliance all for just $99 a month. Uh, so with Bambi, you can change HR from your biggest liability to now your biggest strength. You have a dedicated HR manager available by phone, email, real-time chat. Uh, you know, if you if you need them from, you know, onboarding or, or sadly terminations, they handle that, customize your policies to fit your business, help you manage your employees day-to-day, all for just $99 a month. And there's no hidden fees. You can cancel any time, meaning it's a month-to-month relationship. Uh, you're not locked into some long contract. Let Bambi help get your HR audit done today. Okay, so and they'll, they'll audit for free. If you want to find out, they'll check out your HR situation. All you do is go to B-A-B, uh, B-A-M-B-E, two E's, Bambi.com slash Rick Bubba right now and schedule. Again, it's a free HR audit to see where you stand. That's B-A-M-B-E-E.com slash Rick and Bubba. All right, we're talking to Cassio Kidd. It's uh, it's kind of one of our profile segments on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Uh, those of you that may be new, uh, Jesse Mitchell, Cassio Kidd was a intern back in the uh, around 1998. Worked with the show to 2003. Uh, now is in uh, radio and is in his own ride and, and has been an entertainer. When we left, uh, uh, just for a moment there, uh, Cassio Kidd, when he was on our program, when he said, "Like I got to bring something to the table," I'm, I'm going from intern running around helping out. So I want to be content for the show. Yeah, it seems you begin to bring really an alarming number of stories involving senior citizens, where you had yeah. hurt an elderly person or damaged their assets. Granny, Granny was a bleeder was the first, yeah. um, and that was when I break checked uh, in a for a funeral <laughs> procession, and my mima banked off the dashboard. I remember that, uh, yeah. and broke her yeah. nose. And, uh, mm. and sadly she was a bleeder cause she was on blood. Right. Right. I should have been concerned for her health, but I just saw blood on my seats and carpet of my, <laughs> you know, Honda civic that was used. So I, I thought, well, granny's the bleeder and this is going to take a lot to get out. Yeah. Uh, and that was the first story. And then <laughs> I'm not sure of the timeline, but we had, we had Ben Purr. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then we had uh swimming in the wrong grandmother's swimming pool. Right. That may be my personal favorite. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, where I thought it was my buddy's Meemaw's house, he really was across the street, and I did a cannonball in the wrong Meemaw's it, swimming Into pool. a stranger's yeah. swimming pool. Complete stranger. Uh, she called the cops and her son and the whole deal. My favorite then, on that was you sticking to it. My favorite on that story with the wrong swimming pool was that this woman who was around the same age of your buddy's <laughs> grandmother, you kept insisting that she was wrong, that yeah. her grandson had told you to come by, and in a, in a minute this is all going to be worked out. <laughs> Well, yeah, I thought, well, she needs to get checked out. She's going crazy. She don't even know her own son and grandson. Right. I would say, I said, your grandson, Brent, told me he's going to be here in like 30 seconds. He told me it's okay. And she said, I don't have a grandson. And I went, poor lady, poor lady. She don't even know. As you were swimming. And then you saw your buddy across the street behind his actual grandmother's fence saying over here. Well, that yeah, that was when the uh, the son, her real son, and oh, that's uh, right. a police officer was escorting me out of the back gate. That's right. Uh, yeah. uh, by the way, soaking wet with no shirt on because I did a cannonball. Yeah. Um, Gosh, that's good. Yeah, they probably were was trying to see the what the commotion was. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, he yeah, she, basically she said her sons will come here and deal with you, and he <laughs> yeah, brought the law. I didn't know at the time, but he had texted and said you need you need to come over here. Some memos getting arrested. He thought she was in trouble uh, until I walked out. So then we had that, and then <laughs> yes, my my grandmother. Uh, it was a family secret hidden from me for many years that on the 4th of the July, when I was about 11, maybe, uh, that I, I threw all, I was told, uh, to pick up the hot fire, the used fireworks after 4th of July. Right. And I put them all in a trash bag and then put the trash bag in the rubber trash can on the deck next to the vinyl siding. And <laughs> oh my! well, apparently some of them are still hot and they sit in there and they start you know, they start getting together and partying uh, at night. And the next thing I know is, uh, my grandmother, and grandfather woke up to their house engulfed in flames, not just a little fire, oh my. uh, mass destruction. Um, and so, but they didn't tell me as a young man thought that maybe that was too much for me to handle. And it might've been right. Uh, and then jokes, you know, as years go by jokes started creeping in, 
oh, don't don't let Casio pick up the fireworks, you know. Right. And what, what's that mean? I don't want to anyway, but I'm glad y'all are uh, ruling me out. And then finally, one day we had sitting around at my grandmother's house, it came clear that uh, I was responsible and that was, but it all worked out. That was the reason she was in her current house, which was a very nice house uh, right. uh, that insurance bought. Um, after the fire, after you burned her house down. The entire house, not just yeah. we can do some smoke right. damage right. and we'll right. get out of here. Yeah, right. like uh, bulldog. We have to move to another city because this yeah. one's destroyed. All right, so just for time, That's we, good we, stuff. we, we, you know, I, I wanted. Can we, do we have to? I think we may have time before we get to Jay Leno. <laughs> I, I do want to do the one, Bubba, you brought up in the office that I'd forgotten about. Victoria Jackson. Now the, this is the, a famous the, actress, Saturday Night Live movie star. <laughs> movie star. So huh? you were starting to develop that. Hey, I, I I can do a very very good impression of of uh, uh, of the late. Um, what's his name? I can't think. Chris, of Chris Farley. Farley. Chris Farley. His Matt Foley. Character. Matt Foley character, and you could do it really living good. in a van down by the river. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, he was my comedy idol. Yeah. Yeah. that was my jam. Yeah, and and so Victoria. Jackson is on the show and you think, and we, and I, I'm sure we were behind it. Were we coaxing you to do it? I don't know how it happened that you were going to show her that you yeah. could, you could do the Chris Farley character. And it was a good impersonation. Uh, yeah, everybody well, liked to see you the do. show yeah. 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 and we kind of ran out of time because you know, y'all were having a good time with her and yeah. you guys had to bring her on stage. That's right. And so we, we re we reconvened at the stardom. That's right. And you were like, you guys were like, you've got to hit it now. Uh, and plus it's all fair. If she, you know, it's, we can just knock it out in the green room before we go on stage. And as we're about to start, uh, her daughter uh, comes back there and you guys get me cranked up and I'm, I'm so nervous. I'm, I'm doing a, I mean, to think back at it now, uh, how awful and cringeworthy doing an impersonation of a dead man yep. that, that she worked with. Was friends with. She yeah. worked with and was friends with Chris yeah. Farley. Yes. You know, but you know, it, was now good, it was a good impersonation. Yeah, but now that y'all are saying it, I too don't know why we did this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't know why we did we didn't reason this through. <laughs> right. So um I proceed to launch into Hola Nino's. And about that time uh, is when her daughter was there and you you guys saw it first because I was in the zone. Yeah, you I was hiking the, the pants up and her daughter proceeds to full blown cry. Yes, yeah, her crying. Hide behind her mom. face. Yeah. Uh, and Victoria is trying to handle it like a mom. She is trying not to shut me down, but she's also consoling her daughter, uh, under both arms. Yeah. Um, and so it wasn't the reaction I wanted. We thought there was going to be laughter and, and she was like, oh, that was good. Yeah. She's just torn up. Uh, that was basically uncle Chris to her. And, uh, oh my she's, goodness. She's very torn up about it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it was a yeah. combination, uh, the missing of Chris Farley and the sadness of his untimely death. And the fact you scared her to death. Right. Yeah. Well, well, I was coming in hot. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, were you, you were loud. You were loud. You're a big, big guy. You, you know? were doing a scary impression of somebody that she loved that just died. <laughs> right. Uh, now when you put it that way, it does, <laughs> it, it, you, you kind of wish we hadn't done it. You know? I will tell you this. Here's an update. Um, as you guys know, uh, I do stand up comedy and, um, I met her here in Huntsville. I got to open for her again. Did you, did you re remind her of that story? I brought up the story and I would say, luckily for all of us, she did not even remember it. Okay. And she good. said, cause I asked how many times did the daughter bring it up? Does she still scared about it? And she said, no, she didn't even remember. It. But, good. All right. So, um, so we have to get it. We're running out of time. We got to get into this. You you decided to go to L.A. because you you were going to make it happen. You know there comes that moment if you go if I want to try to make it in the entertainment business I got to make a move and that's a bold, bold big time move on bold your part move Cassio that was awesome. Well, and you pulled you guys up remember I got engaged on my twenty first birthday. You were there for yeah. the surprise party. Yes, where I surprised her. She had a surprise party for me and I surprised her with popping the question. Yes, uh, we are no longer right together. Well, and once that, that was the thing. Um, I thought, wow, I about got locked down, son. Yeah. I had an eye-opening moment. Right. Of and we blame the Fatchler for that, but go ahead. <laughs> right, which we don't even have we time, don't even to have talk time about. for today. That was our reality show that featured <laughs> Cassio Kid. You ever seen and Megan? So did, <laughs> the Fatchler. I, I decided to go. I haven't heard from any of those. Um, <laughs> that's ironic. Um, I, the, yeah, I decided I almost got locked down. T now was now or never. The time is now. If I'm going to do it, I'm still young. I can still come back. And, um, I don't even know if y'all know this, but behind the scenes, originally I was going to go to Chicago for second city, which is oh, where right. uh, Chris Farley and everybody went. And 
behind the scenes, Don Juan was going to go with me. And um, he changed his mind. I uh, sold him on L.A. because I still could go to improv <laughs> class out there. And uh, he was going to go there, and he just – he could not pull the trigger. He, you know, he, he still had it like he liked it with you guys and, and could not pull the trigger. So I just had to load up and, and go uh, by myself. Gutsy uh, move, to, man. Gutsy well, move. Very good. And I remember it was not easy. No, it was, it was not easy, uh, especially if y'all want to talk to Greg on what he thought was happening. I know. I'm, yeah, we, we won't go there again because well, I know you're just now recovering from that joke that Greg seemed to do any time he yeah. could. Yeah. So, so it, it, I, I, hey, how's Cassio well, doing? I'll tell you what he's probably doing. Yeah. But anyway. He I, had several ideas how you were earning a living. Sad transition with five minutes on the clock. Because I was you, in sales. How about this? Sad transition because you actually did have the encounter with Jay Leno's team on the streets. So so tell so tell us how that happened. You were wearing a Rick and Bubba shirt at the time. Happened, yeah. I was well. I went to uh, improv school at the Groundlings, and I, I I lived on an apartment complex on Melrose, and so I would walk down Melrose to class every uh, you know two two nights a week. And uh, one night, uh, Leno was there. Uh, they do filmings all the time there, and you just kind of they're actually in your way. Um, and this time the guy stopped and said, Hey, would you like, you know, I'm wearing sweatpants and a Rick and Bubba Jersey t-shirt. So he thought, well, this guy's going and, uh, he's going places. So, yeah. So he tried to get me on and I, and I made the demand. I would not be on unless I was next. And unless Jay was actually there, cause they would do a lot of them where he yeah. wasn't there. And, uh, he said, well, I, I can go two for two for you. And I was like, Oh, this is real. So, uh, and it was dance. Good dancer, bad dancer, where he would interview somebody, then pause, cut to this audience, and they would yell out, good dancer, bad dancer. And then they would cut to that person dancing. And so everything, again, right place, right time. I've got not only got a Rick and Bubba jersey where he asked me uh, about Rick and Bubba, yeah, and did. I told him it was a radio show, and he said, imagine that, a radio show in Alabama named Rick and Bubba. I remember that line. Then I'm dancing, and, and by the way, bringing it. And yeah. um <laughs> Did you I, did you have I, your hand behind your head and holding your foot jumping around? Yeah, I backed that it up a, on a light pole. Oh, I got yeah, down, yeah. was on the ground, making inappropriate gestures. Uh, <laughs> and uh, perfect timing, a police car rolled up, and uh, that was how Jay ended the segment. Was officer, we're going to take you in. So, and then uh, due to the overwhelming support from the Rick and Bubba Army, um, and everybody you know uh, talking about it and sending them emails. Um, they actually called me back, uh, the casting director, which I hung up on. Um, I did not, I thought it was one of y'all pranking me. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Uh, you know, when, when a guy calls and goes, this is Scott Atwell, the casting director with the tonight show. We want to talk to you about being on since your, your segment had such overwhelming. And I was like, who is it? Who is this? This has got to be somebody from the show. Right. Are y'all recording this to play back on the show? And, uh, but that was it. He brought me in. I ended up uh, being on there for three years. I'll never forget. I'll never, as long as I live, forget. Because it was good when he went to you on the video. That was exciting. But the time he that you started walking out onto the actual set yeah. as a as a reoccurring character on The Tonight Show. Jay Leno yeah. is introducing you and pitching to you. And the first time I saw that, Cassio, I, it's really a feeling I don't think I've ever had no. on earth, Rick. Well, I, mean, I, I, told just... you, I told you, two-headed calf. <laughs> I mean, I... I because it just didn't, you know how your mind will see something sometimes it's not computing. <laughs> it's like, and I said, I those just, two things don't go I together. I think I just saw Cassio Kid on the Night Show like straight up. And uh, I don't, I, I like, I see pictures of it now. Um, I used to have the videos I posted on YouTube and they got pulled for copyright, you know, yeah. myself. Yeah, uh, but, sure. yeah. Um, I, yeah, I used to have those, but I see pictures now or see video clips or somebody and I, it's like I almost forgot that it happened as well. It's like, well, no, that didn't really happen. Do you remember what you, this? What are you talking about? Yeah, do you remember this? Listen. Hey, guys, this is Jay Leno, and you're listening to the Rick and Bubba Show. Hey, could you guys do me a favor? Take Cassio back. <laughs> you, you, you got him to call a voicemail and do that for us. That was huge. So uh, Remember, they, they actually for later came and filmed another segment at the studio. No, you're right. Hmm? They, you're right. You really, had to, you had to tell them, hey, y'all know Casio is from here. Let, let me tell you what was cool about that. A credit to you uh, as we as we wrap it up. Um, you know, you you went there and you earned that and you got that, but you didn't forget our time together and you gave us quite a bit of publicity during all that. And uh, you know, and that that's uh, that doesn't always happen. So that was that, huge. That, so that that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, so Rick. Before we as we wrap. 
Steve Harrison, who was our sales manager, who had a very dry sense of humor, probably had some of the funniest analogies about Casio being on there. Do you remember some of the things he was telling you? Because you were working for him before you went out there as a sales assistant. Gosh, I he did. He did say the bearded lady for sure. Yes. Because uh, I know that y'all had the two headed goat as well. <laughs> He said uh, something yeah, no, he about if a UFO over. landed in the parking lot right. and the door yeah. came down and Bigfoot walked off of it and posed for <laughs> pictures, he wouldn't have been more shocked than when Cassio <laughs> walked out on the stage with Jay Leno. <laughs> well, Cassio, as we, as we wrap up, thanks for taking time. I mean, you uh, you, you do have the skill set. You're a very funny guy. Uh, you, am I on the Mount Rushmore of Rick and Bubba interns? No doubt. Oh, no doubt. absolutely. If, if, if there is a, a right Rick next and- to Blair and Karen. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Who's the fourth? I'd say, I, mean, I think it's D, me, nope. Karen, and Adler. Is that right? No, it'd have to be. I, yeah, as far wow, as... Wow, you started a whole debate. Thank, yeah. Thanks a lot. No, we'll have to deal with that all day. Uh, <laughs> but but that, that's pretty solid four right there, though. Cassio, we got to have you back, man. Yeah. We got we got a lot more right. to talk about. What, what Here, great times. If I learned anything from you, I learned you got to get your shameless plugs in. Be sure to listen to my radio show, uh, Jimbo and Cassio, which we didn't even get into. Right. How am I doing a morning show with Jimbo Wood? How's that happen? Well, because of because of Rick and Bubba. I mean, you know what happens when they see us? They say if he comes out of that that little team, you got to put him on. We're proud. We didn't of even you. talk about the story when Mark and Brian came to town, and you made me call Jimbo at five a.m. and ask whose team he was on, uh, <laughs> Rick and Bubba or Mark and Brian, and he cussed me out and hung up. I on forgot. <laughs> I mean, I forgot. And, and now you do a show with him. So yeah, uh, uh, I got Cass- a podcast of my own, Cassio's Cut, and uh, hopefully you guys will be on it, right? Return the favor. I hope so. Yeah, you, if you if you're honor us with that, we'd love to, buddy. So yeah, uh, thank you, man. Thank you guys for having me on. No. It really is. It's been awesome. It was an honor to. Come hey, it's on. good to see Thanks, you, man. Again. And uh, proud you guys of us are still the legends. Well, proud of your success. You've made that. Uh, we, all we did you've was give, good. All we did is wind you up, but you've done the rest. So <laughs> thanks I'll a lot. I'll take that. Cassio Kid, uh, thanks for being with us on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. <laughs>